Are you really ready to fuel your success as an investor and your personal mindset and being part of a community that wants every person to succeed? Welcome to the Thriving Investor Podcast with author, educator, successful non-traditional investor, Troy Fullwood. Turn up the volume and let's get you set up to thrive. All right, everybody. Well, welcome back to another episode of Thriving Investor. And today I'm honored to have an amazing guest with us. And the gentleman's name is Mr. Brian Ellis. And uh, Brian Ellis is the uh, uh, America's number one podcast for affluent self-directed investors. And uh, he's also something of an expert in the self-directed IRA market, as well as solo 401ks and 1031 exchanges, along with a vast amount of work on his site. You can find more of his writings in some very cool places like thestreet.com. And so, Brian, I want to welcome you here today. Thank you so much for taking some time out of your busy schedule. I know that uh, time is valuable for both you and I and our listeners. And so, thank you so much for being here today. Appreciate it. It's absolutely my pleasure. Thank you, Troy. Well, I've got a, you know, one of the things I like to do is I want to share with our, our listeners uh, more about the guests that come on the show. And, and one of the questions I always want to start off with is just, you know, take a moment and take us back a little bit about how and why you got started in the business of IRA investing and IRA education. Oh, okay. Well, you know, we, we could go all the way back and, and I, I was, uh, uh, I was that kid in uh, college who kind of quit college to start a business. And the business that I started back then was, was a software business and it did really well. But a couple of years later, I was just kind of tired of it and wanted to learn a different way to make money. And, and I, uh, I learned a few different ways, but what I kind of settled on was real estate. And uh, Troy, I was uh, my first couple of years in real estate was to say I was bad at it would be an insult to people who were bad at it. Uh, <laughs> I was awful for the first couple of years. <laughs> It, it took a little bit of learning for me to kind of get past step one. But once I did it, 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 it went pretty well for me. And along the way, some cool things happened. One of which was that I learned about this thing called self-directed IRAs back in the mid and late nineties. And back then nobody had ever heard of any of them uh, practically, but uh, uh, I, I learned a little bit about what it meant to be able to apply your real estate. I'm sorry, your retirement savings to things like real estate and other alternative assets. And it was a pretty cool discovery. Like nobody knew how to do it. Nobody was doing it. And so I kind of got on that bandwagon uh, you know, back when there was nobody else on it and learned a lot about it. And in the process have, uh, uh, you know, I've, 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 I've come to be known as somebody who knows a thing or two about this. And, and I tend to help investors who are trying to do uh, really cool things with their, their retirement accounts accomplish those things and maybe even some things I've never even thought about. So uh, that, that's, that's how we got where we are now. That's amazing. That's amazing. You know, um, if you could help your audience avoid one of the many <laughs> mistakes, expensive mistakes, I like saying the word expensive because I think every day we all make little mistakes, but it's those yeah. big mistakes that we make that are like, Oh man, that's going to hurt, you know, type thing. Yeah. Um, what would be one of those mistakes? And, and the reason I asked that question, I like prefacing it by saying, you know, oftentimes as entrepreneurs and investors, people will tend to look at us like we've got it all together. <laughs> <laughs> and I love their, I love their spirit. I love the fact that they want to put us up on that pedestal. But what I've learned over the years in, in meeting people like yourself and all the other people that we've talked with on the show and, and throughout life in general is that, that we're all people that put on our pants one leg at a time. We get up every morning. We, uh, we do our best. Um, we learn new things every day. And, um, and that's the beauty of it. But share something that like really just kind of comes to mind. Maybe it's something that happened last week. Maybe it's something 10 years ago, but that really hangs out there for you. All right. Well, you know, this, it's, it's not actually real estate related, or are we, we talking about more generally here? It can be anything, anything that comes to mind. Cause the beauty of the thriving investor show is it's really, it is about business, but it's also about living your life at the highest level possible. All right. So, yeah. so I've got two and can do them both very, very quickly. Yeah, sure. 
Um, the first one uh, has nothing to do with business. Uh, it is the tremendous importance of never neglecting the spiritual side of your life um, awesome. and, and having some, some, some reason for being and some clarity about that mm -hmm. and, and not just having a reason, but having actually having a, a code that you live by a standard that you live by. So mm -hmm. that, that's the first thing. And I, I, I say that as someone who wishes I had done it better, not someone, not as someone who claims to have been done it, doing it very well. Sure. Um, and on, on the business side, in real estate and specifically with self-directed retirement accounts, what I'd say is that you've got to be very careful to learn the rules because what you can do with self-directed retirement accounts is astounding. It's nothing short of amazing, amazing, mm -hmm. but there are some pretty serious penalties that are life changing if you get some of the small details wrong. Mm -hmm. So in self-directed retirement accounts, it is probably more important than in just about any other area that you really have a solid and an unbiased education about how to use that tool. Nice, nice, nice. You know, I, I agree with, uh, you know, you, you mentioned there the spirituality uh, strength and, and development. One of the, the uh, things in my life that has probably made the biggest impact in both my personal life and my business life is a strong spiritual foundation. Mm. And yeah. I can't say that I've always followed it. Uh, matter of fact, I, probably spent majority of my life not following it and um, the the having the opportunity to rebuild and regain and, and redevelop and get back on track yeah has been nothing short of remarkable in oh, what I've experienced in life and yeah, that's the awesome. things and the gifts and the things that we've been able to do for other people and vice versa so. Yeah, it really changes your focus whenever you have a clear mind, doesn't it? It, it really does. And especially coming from the world that you and I come from, you know, being around money, mm -hmm. you know, and investments. Yeah. Um, I don't look at money and investments the way that probably a lot of people do. I look at it from, okay, this is going to make me a return. And that's oftentimes just a simple mathematical equation. Sure. And, but what does that return mean like what can I do with that money as it grows like how can yeah. I be a blessing to other people and um and well that's even a biblical principle really I mean we won't go too deep into that but there's there's that story in the bible of the, the guy with the talents and the one that got scolded was the guy who didn't do anything with his money the, the other two were praised when they you know doubled their their uh the 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 gifts that they were given so that 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 has a strong spiritual principle to to you know, to multiply what you're given because that's the right way to do things. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, and I, and I love that, uh, that analogy. Another analogy that I love is, is we get to be used, you and I, and we get to be used as conduits in this world yeah. to share our knowledge and our experience with other people. Whether, and because of that, we're blessed in that. In other words, we get to kind of, I say, for lack of better words, move things down the line. Yeah. By doing that, we get to, you know, we get to share or receive a portion of it. And yeah. usually that share or receiving of whatever that portion is, is, is in my experience has been oftentimes more than I ever needed. Oh yeah. yeah. You know, type thing. You know, I need $10, right. but all of a sudden I get blessed with a hundred dollars type thing. Yeah. Wow. Okay. That's, that's pretty neat. So I love that. I love, I love the spiritual journey in, in, uh, and people in this space, because I think a lot of times the, uh, you know, money has a negative connotation and money's evil and the secular world tends to kind of place that on there. And I, yeah. and I, it, I don't look at it as being evil. I, I think it can be used for evil. Well, yeah. I mean, the, the, the source of that is, is a passage in Proverbs that, uh, that says something like that, but it's very different. What it actually says, it says the love of money. Is the root of all evil, not money. That's a very huge distinction. Yes. Yeah. Very different. Very different. No, I love it. I love it. Um, so another question, you know, we've all made mistakes along the way, but people who are successful don't allow failure to define who they are. What things have you run across or come against that 
you didn't, that were mistakes in your eyes, maybe not even in the world's eyes, but that you didn't allow to define yourself. You know, that you didn't, you didn't allow it to hold you back. That's a really good question. And I'm going to be honest with you, Troy. I've got an answer, but only time will tell if, if okay. I've kind of gone the right way. <laughs> sure. um, you know, I, I, one of the, the bigger successes in my life early on was that we, long before anybody else was doing it, we, we were out there using the internet to do, uh, to, to do real estate investments uh, and, to, and to find leads and, and to, you know, to, to do those kinds of things that, you know, back in the mid and late nineties, just nobody was thinking about. Sure. And we ended up building a, a, a tool, a, a, a system that made it possible for other investors to just kind of duplicate what we had. And that went over very, very well. It was very successful for us. We, we did well, it was fun, but what I didn't do and what uh, bit me very hard is that we kind of rested on our laurels. We, we chose mm. not to really try to innovate. We, it's not that we re resisted being high quality. We were good at what we did. It's just that sure. what we did ceased to be as relevant as it originally was. And I didn't see it. Mm. And, and so um, that to me is, is, is a problem that, that I, I hope I have less now, but I have historically had uh, a little bit of tunnel vision. Okay. And, um, and, and not just tunnel vision, but like a, a tunnel that's not necessarily very long term. <laughs> okay. You know, only seeing a little ways down the road. And so, so that's something that I've been uh, historically not as good as I need to be. And that, that, uh, I'm, that I'm, I think I've gotten better, but there's still a lot of work to do. <laughs> no, no, that's, that's, I love that, um, that insightfulness. You know, one of the things about getting better in business and as fathers and husbands and, and leaders is you have to under, you, you, you look at where you're really good at. And then you look at where you could use some more work oh, and, no doubt. and by working on those weaknesses. And I, I don't like using the word weakness, but by working on those matters, you just become a better, stronger leader in, yeah. in all, in all areas. So no, yeah, that's you know, as you said that that's kind of funny. I, I, I dislike the word weakness too, but I'd never had a, a, a better one to fill it with. And I'm, I'm kind of thinking that opportunity might be a good way to describe them instead. Mm -hmm. <laughs> New opportunities, new, <laughs> new opportunities. the list of opportunities. <laughs> and we all have that list, you know? Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> like I have my opportunity list. It's over here in the corner. I'm, wor I'm working on that. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> and you strike them off one by one as they become not an opportunity any longer. <laughs> little by little, you know, as, as men, we're, we're, we're striking them off and sometimes our wives are adding to them. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> like you know those old fat or those old pins that I mean they're still around where you could write and then you could turn it over and there was an eraser and you could erase the pen part. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. Our, our wives exactly. might have that eraser part. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> what we need though. It is. You know, being in great partnerships in uh and surrounding yourself with great people are what gives us the chance to lift them up and then we're you know, simultaneously lifted up in the process because oh, yeah. it's, it's reciprocal in life. And, and it's, uh, it, it, yes, it's actually painful too. If, if uh, Troy, if you have people around you that are really good mm -hmm. and you kind of end up being their muzzle. Yes. And, and I say this from experience, unfortunately, yeah. uh, because I, I'm thinking of my wife right now. Mm -hmm. My wife is an amazing woman. She's brilliant. She's got an extraordinary background. Yes. Uh, in, in a lot of, in a lot of ways, including in the real estate industry. And for the longest time, kind of, uh, I, I was a stumbling block for her. Basically she, she did an extraordinary job of writing our newsletter and that's kind of what we built our business on for, for a very long time. Mm -hmm. But I didn't really let her spread her wings and, and wow. looking back that hurt. I mean, like that's had long lasting ramifications that I wish I, you know, I wish I'd done it better. Yeah. Yeah. In, in hindsight, it's always one of those 2020 things, you know, as men and leaders and husbands and fathers, you know, we, like you mentioned, we kind of get our own tunnel vision about what it should look like. And, and my wife is very much, the, you know, she's brilliant and insightful and strong and, and beautiful. And, and there have been times where 
I've been like, no, I don't want to go What's that she, way. What's she doing with you, man? What's that? <laughs> What's she doing with you? <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> I love it, I love it. That's true. I, I think about that some days and like, wow, how did I end up with this beautiful woman? You know, this is like, wow, I got lucky. That was a good day. That was a good day. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh, man, I love it. Um, so, you know, um, man, I have so many great questions here for you. Um, so let's say there was a magic reset button and you could go back and start over. Mm -hmm. What would you do differently in life the second time around? Wow. Magic reset button. And what would I do differently? Well, uh, I'd, I'd say that'd go back to the answer I gave the first time through is that uh, when, when I was, in the early years of my uh, professional life, mm -hmm. I was all about being as good as I could be professionally. Mm -hmm. And that's good. That has its place. But really, I neglected the rest of my existence. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I was not a terrible husband or a terrible father or anything like that. But sure. I did not give uh, sufficient focus to those areas. I did not give sufficient focus to the the more spiritual side of my life. Mm -hmm. and. I paid for it. Mm -hmm. um, so if I had it to do all over again, I would more aggressively and more completely adopt a, a more whole life operating system, so to speak. Okay. Uh, and actually follow it rather than just, uh, you know, say I follow it. <laughs> there, you follow. there you go. No, no, that's, that's great. You know, and that's a very common thing. I think, you know, when I talk and interview people, it's there, a lot of them go back to, you know, if they could reset, they don't necessarily want to wipe out the experiences because there was right. value in the experiences, but they always tend to turn to, I could have been better at, right. I could have done better at. And, um, you know, and I think that's, I think that's part of growing. I think it's part of maturing. I think it's part of, you know, becoming, uh, you know, um, a much more grounded person right. in this world. And, um, and I think it's definitely a part of, mat you know, maturing. Like what I used to do at 20, I don't do at 52, you know, yeah. and, and I don't think anybody does. Um, uh, but a lot of times we just grow in, in different ways. So that's, you, you know, just that's, can't see it when you're younger, when you haven't done it before, you just can't, you, you can't see the, the, the forest for the trees really. And that's, that's where I was. That's where a lot of people are, but that's yeah. definitely what I do differently is I would kind of look and try to try to make, decisions on the basis of where it puts me 10 years from now and 20 years from now and at the end of my life rather than tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, one, one thing that comes to mind on this and I was, I was thinking about it just the other day and I said, you know, <clears throat> I grew up in an environment that was really amazing in the sense that I had, uh, we had nine different companies and oh, wow. when I was a kid and so aunts and uncles and grandparents and mom and dad own different companies. And I remember my grandfather telling me I started a landscaping company when I was 16 and I remember my grandfather telling me, he's like, you need to invest $16,000 in a IRA fund, you know, mutual fund. And if you put in $2,000, I mean, he showed it, he laid it all out. The art of sure. compound interest, sure. Big old spreadsheet. Like here, here, you know, this is what this will be worth to you. You invest this, by the time you get to 65, it'll be worth X. And it was millions of dollars. You know, sure. and I was like, yeah, grandpa, but you don't understand. You know, I'm over here and, and I was, I was making way too much money at, at, at 17, 18 years old to listen to anybody. You know, I thought <laughs> I had figured out, baby. I was yeah. like, man, stay out of my way. This truck is coming through. <laughs> and I just could, you couldn't tell me anything. You couldn't tell me the time of day. And, um, uh, and I bet you thought you were humble too, didn't you? <laughs> yeah. I, I thought it was very humble. I thought I was, you know, brilliant and humbled and, you know, just, yeah. And, uh, there was, so, sounds very familiar to me if you can't tell. <laughs> yeah, there, I got knocked off a few pedestals along the way since then. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, <laughs> And, so, and I look back going, you know, wow, you know, I wish I would have listened. I wish because, you know, you get to our age and you realize you, that clock doesn't go backwards. Yeah. It, it never does. And, and going, man, you know, 
knowing that and if I would have done that, then at 65, there'd be a couple more million dollars and I'd be so much better situated for um, retirement. And, and yeah. we're very blessed and we're certainly not going to need for anything. But I just go back thinking, man, all the things that were blessings to me, and I'm sure you had the same thing. People like wanted it, were trying to pour into you. Yeah. But there was like this glass lid um, on top. You know, it's yep. like, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's tough. I, I, <laughs> yep. Um, that, that, that sounds like me in, in earlier in life for sure. Or earlier days. Yeah. I, I was driving down the road the other day and I said, I said to my, uh, I said to myself, I'm like, wow, I only have another, another eight years. And uh, I was having this conversation with myself. I know nobody else does that, but I do. And no, no, not at all. In, in the truck, and I said, "Wow, I only have another eight years before my uh, before I become really smart." And the <laughs> eyes, seventeen year old, because he's seven, <laughs> and he. But I fear by the time he gets to twenty five, I'll I'll know a few things. You know, <laughs> so, there you go. <laughs> so, I only got another eight years. You know, so uh, and you, you know, it, it, it's funny you say that. Uh, that that kind of applies in a, a, a different context as well. Of of if you just done things differently earlier. I, I, I'm in kind of a unique position, Troy, because uh, I, I have I have four kids, mm -hmm. but I, I've had two different wives, and the, the you know two kids with each, and mm -hmm. their ages are dramatically different. The the older two are 18 and 20, and the younger two are three and four. Okay, um, and so it's like I have two different generations of children. Uh huh. And I, I, I can see the older ones and how they're behaving there and they're good kids. And like, mm -hmm. I don't have, have anything to complain about, but right. I can see how, how their behavior today would potentially be different or better had, had I been different or better as a parent. And mm -hmm. uh, that's a painful thing to see. It's kind of like looking back and seeing that you didn't put in the $16,000 uh, that, that grew over 40 years. Yeah. Uh, but on the other hand, you know, it, it gives you a, a, a wake up call to adjust and, and, change things so that you can move forward in a better way. Yeah. Well, you and I share, you and I have a very similar background. Um, I have two older boys, one's 14 and 17, and they're from uh, a previous marriage. Mm -hmm. and I have two younger boys that are twin boys. They're five year old oh, wow. twins. Wow. From, uh, Kim, who's, who's my um, last and only last wife. <laughs> <laughs> she, she's my blessing from God, you know, there you go. Well, then you know what I'm talking about. Like you, you can, you can see yeah. from one generation of kids to the next, how, how, how things will actually play out in reality. Absolutely. And, and I, I see it and I see my older ones and one, one of my older boys lives with me and one of the other, the, the oldest lives with his mom and we live about two miles apart from each other. So we're not, we're not very far, maybe three, but yeah, we're not very far from each other. Yeah. And, and so I'm involved in the older one's life on a regular basis. You know, our, our life centers around Snapchat and texting. You know, that's, 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 that's how we communicate. That's about right. Yeah. We, God forbid that we would pick up the phone and talk. Uh, or he would answer the phone. I do call, but he doesn't answer. He does the chat thing. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, the, the being around them and you see just the generational differences and, mm -hmm how they were raised and then the, what they went through what the older ones experienced and what the younger ones have never experienced. And then the teamwork and the camaraderie, and it goes back to, you know, that, that unit model that's mm -hmm. talked about like working as a team and working together and having the right people around you. And you know, we're talking about family here, which is obviously the core of success the way I see it. And, but then even in business, like in, I, you talk about your, your expertise is in the, is in the area of solo 401ks and Roths and stuff like that, you know, and you mentioned just briefly about it, how important it is to really know the guidelines and the, and, and the rules of the game to succeed yeah. in the game. You've got to understand the rules of the game. Right. And, and what are some of the things that, um, like, you know, what are, what are some basic rules that people should understand about investing in Roths, like in a self-directed Roth? Okay. Well, uh, 
uh, Roths and traditionals, the, the rules are basically the same. So we'll, we'll address them simultaneously. Okay. Um, so one thing, uh, Troy, is that everybody is aware that uh, with a self-directed IRA that you have broad flexibility to invest in just about anything you want. And a, a lot of people also know, because you can find this out by doing a, a simple search on the internet, Hmm. A lot of people also know that the only two things that are really explicitly forbidden for IRAs are life insurance and collectibles. So if you don't know that, now you do. But hmm. with that information, a lot of people go forward and think, well, if I just don't buy anything in my, in my IRA that's a, a life insurance or collectible, I can do anything else. Well, that's also not true. Hmm. Uh, there, there, there are at least two other things that you have to think about, actually a lot of them, but they're kind of boiled down really well in these, these other two issues in terms of selecting investments for your IRA. And those other two things are, number one, what's the nature of the income that's generated from your investment? Okay. So uh, uh, there, there's earned income and unearned income, uh, active and passive income, that's a better way to explain it. And okay. we, do, we don't have to get into the technicals, but the reality is that those two types of income, one of them is protected by an IRA. One of them, uh, the IRA completely wipes out taxes on those. On the other one, doesn't wipe it out at all. And most people don't even realize that your IRA can be taxed mm. you know, depending on the nature of the, the, the income that you're generating. So you've got to think about that, whether it's active or passive. Um, and another thing is that uh, you've got to think on the surface and much deeper than that in terms of who are the parties in this transaction? Okay. Because if you, if you do everything else right, if you invest in an asset that is allowed, if you invest in an asset that produces passive income, so you get all the tax benefits, all mm -hmm. that's great, all that's fine. But if you end up doing a transaction where everything else is perfect, but somebody related to you or somebody that, uh, you know, a company that you kind of have an interest in, if somebody like that ends up benefiting even indirectly, as a result of the transaction, then you've blown up your IRA. It's not, you didn't blow up that transaction. You've blown up your IRA. And oh, we're talking, wow. what we're talking about is for, losing 40 to 60% on average. And sometimes a lot more of the entire account. Oh, wow. So, so you got, you, you got to think about more than just uh, what, what are you allowed to do? You got to think about the nature of the income and who are the parties involved directly and indirectly. Oh, wow. So there's a lot that goes into, I mean, it's, there's a lot that goes into just even having an IRA and the responsibility behind it. Well, yeah, but uh, it, the truth is that most people don't get involved in, in self-directed IRAs and such uh, for the broad purpose of investing in alternative assets. Most of them, like a lot of them will be uh, uh, people who have learned note investing from Troy Fullwood and they want to get involved and do note investing. Well, it turns out that notes are one of the really best asset classes to put into IRAs and 401ks. They just have some structurally and, and reg in a regulatory sense, they have some, some advantages that a lot of other assets don't, but that's what most people do is they kind of pick one, one area that they're going to focus on, maybe notes, maybe real estate, may maybe private companies. And it turns out once, once you learn the rules, uh, kind of how the game is played around the assets that you're interested in. It's really not that complicated because you don't have to learn everything else. Do you find that most of your um, clients or IRA owners, um, do you find that most of them kind of find a niche and then kind of stay in that niche, like maybe 90% of the time type thing? The ones who are successful. Yes. Okay. Um, uh, now, there does tend to be some, you, I bet you've observed this too, Troy, actually, one of the things that, I, that I've observed is that successful real estate investors, a very common uh, a kind of life path or, or growth path for them is that they'll get involved uh, first by doing something like wholesaling, and then maybe they do a, a, a renovation, and then along the way, they probably start acquiring some rental properties, and, and you know, 25 years later, they have a bunch of rental properties and the money's coming in and they realize this is nice, but it sure would be nice if I didn't have to think about tenants. And, and so then, then they, they sell off those properties and they have to have somewhere to put that money. And so a lot of them end up getting into notes. Mm -hmm. That's a, that, that's a progression that I have observed many times. And that, that makes a lot of sense. But when I, when I see a person who gets into self-directed retirement accounts, because today they're interested in real estate and tomorrow they're interested in cryptocurrencies, Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not saying you can't be successful in both. I'm saying it's unusual. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And the, the reason I bring that up is that, you know, there's such a variety of things that you can do with self-directed IRAs and there's 
so much information out on the internet about yeah. every opportunity under the sun, you know, right. from gold and platinum to wine to, uh, you know, cryptocurrencies and, and things like that, yeah. that I would, um, I was curious as to what level people get what I call squirrel syndrome. You know, you having younger children, me having younger children, we're familiar with squirrel syndrome. So, 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 and, and I've seen it in adults as well. So, Oh yeah, no, it, um, it, it happens a lot. And you, you, we, the cryptocurrency thing was a great example of it. Like at the, at the end of 2017, when Bitcoin was doing what it did, yes, there was so much. In fact, the, the one article that I've written on Forbes that's gotten more traffic than any other was the one that I wrote about doing cryptocurrency investing in an IRA. But my, my advice was kind of maybe, maybe you shouldn't do it. Okay. Um, and that's not to say that you can't make money with it. Uh, is, uh, far be it from me to say that. That's, that's not sure. the truth at all. Uh, I, I, I recommended that at the time because there just wasn't a whole lot of good infrastructure in place for doing that sort of thing. And no, there was just not a lot of history for it. And, 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 I'm old fashioned, but I'm an engineering type. That's what I studied in school. And like, uh, I, I like to see the black and white numbers, the, the, you know, the, the, the logical progression for, for things before money goes into it. And I just didn't see that with cryptocurrencies. But the reality is that a lot of people just kind of, you know, squirrel syndrome that and mm -hmm. dumped a lot of money into it. And the people who did that in November, December last year, yeah. they got slaughtered and yeah. it's horrible to see. Yeah. Yeah. And that's it, cryptocurrency is its own, it's its own understanding. Yeah, it really is. It, you know, and people often ask me like, Hey, Troy, do you own stocks? And, and I often say, no, I, I don't own any stocks outside of my own private, uh, my own companies. Um, and then the trust owns that stuff. But um, I don't go out and buy stocks and I don't do trading of stocks, not because I don't believe in them, mm -hmm. but because I don't, I'm not willing to invest the time yeah. that it requires to make intelligent decisions. Yeah. In them. And I mean, I, I've got friends that they're brilliant at stocks. They, yeah. I mean, they, I see them all the time and they're like doing amazing and I, but they're passionate about it. And yeah. I, I love talking with them and learning their passion and hearing their passion and I cheer them on from the sidelines and, and they do great. But uh, right. and so I always encourage people to, to find things that they're passionate about and allow that to grow. And, and we've got investments in cryptocurrency and things of that nature. And we've done extremely well in that yeah. space, but we don't, we certainly, um, we don't follow the hype. Yeah. I bet you didn't take all of your money and all the assets that you really understand and cash that in and put it in cryptocurrencies. Did you? Oh no, no, it was, <laughs> it was, I, and I, I put in there, um, money that I could afford to lose. Sure. Sure. And, I, and, and, and that's really the distinction. If, if you, uh, if we're, if we're honest with, with each other, like uh -huh. cryptocurrencies is one of those things that not that specifically, but every now and again, there's something that comes along that, that's like a, a, a generation definer, or it feels like it might be that. And I right. think cryptocurrency may still end up being that, but uh, I, I just had to recommend that everybody be very careful about it because the infrastructure is just not there. Like, like, you know, if, if stocks were a brand new thing, yes, but, but it was the case that just yesterday, the New York stock exchange had been hacked and a lot of people lost their account. Well, wow. it'd be hard for me to recommend you getting in the stocks. And that, that's kind of the situation with, with cryptocurrencies. About 95% of the people who get involved are never going to be hacked or have any trouble or anything like that. But you just got to be careful about how you treat your money. You got to, you got to respect your capital. That's the bottom line. Absolutely. And, and that's, um, you know, one of the things I, I always encourage people is, you know, investing. There's so many, I mean, you and I could create a laundry list of investments out there yeah. um, in a very short period of time. And, and all of them, we can make all of them sound amazing right. just by showing results from either ourselves or what other people have done. But then at the end of the day, is it, is it something that that person or that individual can really, one, wrap their head around it, to understand it, and then be okay with, you know, going that direction? You know, it, it's interesting you say that because when, when people ask me to tell them what a self-directed IRA is, you know, I, I, can, I can give you the technical definition, but really the, the definition at the end of the day is it's, it's a way that you can use your retirement savings to invest and save for, for who you are and what you believe and what your values are rather than having all that forced on you by Wall Street. Yeah. So that, that's, that's really the distinction. 
I think one of the, the, um, what I see about you and I is in, in, in similar aspects is we're very much about being the captain of our own ships. Yeah. And we would rather learn about how to invest our own money than to give it to somebody else who's going to tell us what to do. Yeah. And, um, and that has pros and cons, both sides of that. It really does. <laughs> um, you know, some days we look like geniuses and, um, and some days. And then other days nobody hears from us. Yeah. Because <laughs> we're crying in the corner. <laughs> uh, we're trying to find enough band-aids to uh, make ourselves back up and get back in the game. Uh, yeah. So, and, that, and that's just investing. And, you know, a, a friend of mine, he's the, he, he um, He's the vice president of the New York Stock Exchange, and and they those guys move money like huge amounts of money all day long, yeah. and they're they're like unfazed by all of it. They're just it's just it's just another zero and another comma to them, and um, but you know there are times where you know the market shifts yeah. big, and you'll you'll see the the worriness come over their face. Yeah. Um, you know, especially after they've had a really good run at it and they don't see yeah. a fast return. But uh, um, I think and that's I think, exactly why I like the whole self-directed thing, because at least, at least if nothing else, it lets me kind of hedge my risk. Mm -hmm. Not that I always do it effectively, but uh, it gives me that option. And, and that's a beautiful thing. Well, when, when it's, when it's on your shoulders and you're playing the game or you're playing in the space for your benefit, for your wife's benefit, for your family's benefit, it's a different mindset that goes into that. Yeah. It's it's not here. Here's five hundred dollars into a Disney stock. We'll see how it goes. Yeah. And like I said, I'm not anti stocks. I just right. don't understand it. And even my wife has said, "Hey, do you want to buy some Amazon stock or something like that?" And I would probably put money in those stocks. Um, I wouldn't have a problem with it, but I also wouldn't look at it as being. I wouldn't put a lot of money, number one, and I don't know that I would um, look to retire on it type thing. Right. It would right. be more of a fun play. The one stock I would love to buy, and I should have bought it 10 years ago, would have been Berkshire Hathaway. <laughs> Maybe 30 years ago. <laughs> yes, yeah, 30, I, I, I think in 10, because I think around 10, it was around 50 grand a stock. Um, but yeah, I mean, even, even I don't know, Back. just yeah. to be in the room i just oh, like no to doubt. be in the room no doubt no yeah. doubt but it, you know it's just it's crazy what can happen because you look at a stock like facebook and i'm not really a stock guy either although i did a lot of stock trading in the past hmm. just yesterday uh and i don't remember what what today's date is but just yesterday uh facebook fell by i think it was 23 percent in one yeah. day um yeah. you know that can happen in real estate too let's let's be honest but uh Man, the the speed at which disaster happens in, in the conventional financial world is is terrifying. Yes, yeah. I mean, Zuckerberg lost like seventeen or eighteen billion dollars worth of net worth. That's a rough day. That is a rough day. <laughs> I, I mean, um, and I bet he didn't actually feel it. That's the crazy thing. <laughs> yeah, he he probably was like, whatever. But you know that. Yeah, that 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 would might make me start drinking again. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> that might be one of those days. Like, there you go. I have a glass of wine today. <laughs> <laughs> yep, honey, um, we lost seventeen billion today. Did you see it? <laughs> yeah, I just yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna take an extra trip around the block here. I just need that quiet time. You know? <laughs> Need a couple extra miles of windshield time just to think this one. Um, <laughs> no, I love it. I love it. No, this has been great. Well, you know, Brian, how can people, you know, get a hold of you and your team and, and how can you work with them? It, you know, I'd like you to leave your contact information here and, and so they can reach out to you. I mean, I really appreciate this call. It's been amazing. It's just been amazing. Hey, it's, it's been my pleasure, Troy. The, the best way to re reach out to us is, is on our website at sdisociety.org sdisociety.org and we also have a web uh, a, a podcast called self-directed investor talk uh you can get us either one of those places they'll both, both be great fantastic fantastic brian it's it's just been such an honor i love um i love doing podcasts and i love uh talking to people of like-mindedness and and yeah. and uh 
it just, uh, it makes me feel like I'm not alone in the world. <laughs> sometimes. I understand what you mean. Yes. It's kind of lonely, just, this entrepreneur thing, isn't it? it? It is. You know, people, uh, you know, just because you're on the cover of the magazine doesn't necessarily mean you're, you're surrounded by, you know, lots of people. No. Uh, it can be a lonely journey, but I love the journey. I love the people. I mean, yeah. Amazing people like yourself and, and even uh, people that haven't made it on the podcast yet. But uh, Absolutely. thank you so much for being here. Uh, thank My you uh, for your time and your energy. People, if you haven't ever met Brian and you haven't followed him, please, please reach out to him and follow the amazing advice and the insight that he's giving. He's got his own podcast as well. and I'm sure we'd love to have you back uh, in the near future as well, Brian, and hopefully you'll take us up on that. Invitation. I'd love to do that. Absolutely. Thank you, Troy. It's been, been my, my honor and pleasure to be here with you. Thank you, sir. Will you have a blessed day? Have a great week. Take care. Bye now. Thank you for listening and being a part of the thriving investor community. Please share this podcast with a friend or a business associate that you know, like you, is interested in learning from top mentors in the non-traditional investing, real estate, crypto, blockchain, buying debt, and so much more. Troy wants to give you a gift. So go to troyfullwood.com forward slash book to get your free copy of Troy's latest book, The Power of Paper. Again, that's troyfullwood.com forward slash book to get your free gift. Go check out the latest episodes and shows at the Thriving Investor community at thethrivinginvestor.com.